So in the last video, we saw how we can solve the um, time-independent Schrodinger equation for the infinite square world numerically with Python. So we found the wave functions and the energy levels. And now we're going to look at how we can find the time evolution of a quantum system. And so in quantum mechanics, the time evolution of a system is governed by the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. And so the time-dependent Schrodinger equation is this, and it's just a partial differential equation. And this equation can be solved using a, a separation of variables technique. And so we just assume that our time-dependent wave function is just a product of a spatial part and a time component. And so if we carry out this uh, calculation, we see that the time component is just given by this complex exponential, where e are the energy levels. And so a general state, so psi of x and t, can just be written as a linear combination of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. And so this is just given by the expression over here. And so the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian in this case are just the psi j's, and these are the wave functions that we found in the previous video. And so now if we know the initial state of our system, so when t equals zero, we can find the coefficients for this expansion, so the cj's, and these cj's are just given by this uh, integral. So integral of psi of x zero star times psi j of x dx. And so in this example, we'll just uh, suppose that we have an electron of mass m that's in an infinite square well of length l, and that at time t equals zero, our electron is prepared in this state. And so this state is just a sort of uh, triangular function. And so the first thing we should do is uh, to build a Python function that returns the initial state of the system. And of course, we have to ensure that it's properly normalized. So let's start. So here we have our imports. So we need numpy matplotlib, and we also need a, a signal from the scipy library. So the first step is to create our grid. So this was done in the last video. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you go check it out. And so we have a grid of 500 points, a well of length 2, and this is our actual grid of x. And here we have delta x, which is the grid point spacing. And then I just defined a few constants that I set to 1. So we'll be working in the, in the units where h bar and m, so the electron mass, are just 1. And so... And so the, the first thing that we should do is to um, define an integral function. So integrals can be approximated by Riemann sums on our discrete space. I've explained this in my last video. And this will be used to find the coefficients and to normalize uh, different wave functions that we have. So let's just do def integral of f. And the we'll have a keyword argument axis, which will be defaulted to 0. And this will just return numpy.sum f times delta x along the given axis of the array. And now we have this, we can start constructing our initial system, or our initial state. So we'll just do, so initial state, that will just be def psi 0 of x. And so we have to, remember, our initial state is given by this, which is just a sort of triangular function. So we can call the um, triangle, will just be equal to signal dot triang and that will just be of the same length in our array and now that we've got a triangle we just want to make sure it's normalized so we'll just say that a our normalizing factor is just equal to the integral of triangle squared and then we just return our triangle uh, divided by numpy dot square root of a and this just makes makes sure that our uh, mod squared of our initial wave function integrates to 1, as it should. So to check that this is all correct, let's just plot our initial wave function. So plt.plot x. So x will range from 1 to minus 1, because remember, I've explained this in my last video, but we discard the endpoints of our grid, because psi of uh, 0 and psi of l have to be 0. This is a condition in the infinite square well. So we have uh, x from minus 1 to minus 1, and then we'll have psi 0 of x from 1 to minus 1. And let's see what this gives us. So yeah, we see that we get this, this nice um, triangular function. And so now that we've got our initial state, we should find the um, eigenstates in our expansion, right? We have to find the psi j's and also the energy levels. And this is what we did in the last video, right? So the, the Hamiltonian for us for this infinite square world is just the kinetic energy. 
and it can be represented by a, a tridiagonal matrix. So we can just, this is what I've done here, so I'll just print H for you, and we see that it's a tridiagonal matrix. Again, I've explained this in my last video, so go check it out. And next step is to uh, diagonalize the Hamiltonian, and that gives us the energy levels and the wave functions, so this is what I'm doing here. And then we just want to normalize these wave functions, so make sure that their mod squared integrates to 1. And so now we're all happy we've got our uh, wave functions and the different energy levels for our system. And so now that we've got all this, we can find the expansion coefficient, so the Cj's, by integrating with psi of x0. And another thing that we have to make sure is that our Cj's sum to 1, so the mod squared of our Cj sum to 1, because remember, the mod squared of these coefficients represents the probability of finding the system in a particular state. So we want all these probabilities to sum to 1, and this is given by this condition. So we'll just create an empty list for our coefficients. So C is going to be this list, and then we can just write a for loop that um, integrates all the wave functions times a psi of x0. So we'll just do for n in the range n minus 1. Remember, we're going from n minus 1 because we discarded uh, the two endpoints. So for n in range n minus 1, we just append, so C dot append. So the integral of psi 0 of x from 1 to minus 1 times uh, psi of n. And then we can just turn c again into a numpy array, so c equals numpy dot array. And then to check that our um, probability sum to 1, we can just use the norm function in a numpy, so numpy dot linalg dot norm c, and that allows us to check these this um, normalization condition. And so yeah, we see that our probabilities do sum to 1, so this is all fine. And so now we have uh, everything we need to construct the um, expansion for the time-dependent wave function, so psi of x and t. So remember, it's just given by this a linear combination of the psi j's that we already have, so we can just define a psi of t, so def psi of t, and that will just return so we'll have the psi j's transposed, uh, matrix multiplied with the c, so are the coefficients, times numpy dot exponential minus 1j. And so minus 1j in Python is just the complex unit i times the energy times the time, all divided by h bar. And so this expression that I've written down is just a way of um, writing this expansion as a uh, matrix product. And so we can just run this, and now what we can do, now that we've got our time-dependent uh, wave function, we can just plot uh, to see how it evolves with time. So we'll just do plt.plot, and so we have uh, x, again, ranging from 1, so x1 to minus 1, and then we have, um, so remember, our wave function is a complex function, so it has a real and an imaginary part. So for example, we can plot its a real part, so mp.real, psi of zero, so that will be the first uh, wave function. And so yeah, we see that it gives us what we're expecting, because we said it was just this triangular function. But so what's interesting is to see what happens as we change the time. So let's put the time, for example, to two. Here we'll put it to like five or something, and then we'll do time at, let's say, ten. And so yeah, we see that our wave function is changing with time, right? So it's it's different at different times. So we can maybe add another step there. So five, uh, what about um, eight, for example? And yeah, this is what we get. So we get this sort of kind of blobby wave. And so what would be interesting to do is to just write um, a code that animates this time evolution to actually see how it's working. I've just added this code, which allows us to uh, animate the uh, time evolution of the um, so the real part of the time-dependent wave function. And it takes a few seconds to run, but if we run it, we see that we get this really cool-looking animation of how our, the real part of our wave function uh, evolves in the well. And so what you can do is you can also, for example, plot the mod squared of the wave function to find the how the probability evolves, and this allows you to do all kinds of really cool uh, computations. So yeah, thanks for watching.